Welcome to In the Den with Dr. Jen, a safe and pleasurable place to explore female sexuality in a comprehensive manner and start thinking about female sexuality outside the box. So today, I'm very excited about my guest, Nicholas Tana, who is the director of a new documentary on masturbation. <laughs> Why are you doing a documentary on masturbation? Well, I think it's a subject that touches us all one way or another. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's something that... Uh, I felt, for, for once, it, it hasn't been done before, or that I know of. There's no real comprehensive film out there on masturbation. And um, I've always been fascinated with sexual taboos, taboos in general, but especially sexual ones. And I think uh, there's, there's a lot of misinformation surrounding it, a lot of myths that needed to be debunked. And this has been a really good opportunity to do that. So how many people have you talked to at this point? I think by the end of this next production trip, we'll be at about 44 experts in many different scenarios. I mean, many different walks of life, from uh, religious leaders even to yes. uh, priests. We have a Buddhist monk covering the moral section of it, and um, we've even got some se plenty of sexologists and uh, uh, educators. And so it's it's really comprehensive. We even have a politician, so. <laughs> porn stars. <laughs> we get Perfect. Well, what has been what's been the most shocking to you? Something that somebody said or a perspective you hadn't considered, or um, the most shocking thing so far to me actually has been the resistance that I've received from this. And maybe it's me, and and maybe I have a little bit more of an open mindset to sexuality. I don't know. No, but in, in trying to get guests and people to talk about it, I've been very surprised at how difficult it is when they know that it's a subject about masturbation. Is it a fear of having to personally talk about masturbation or, or even academics talking about it? Well, I think personally there's definitely the fears for everybody. <laughs> I think everyone gets a little uncomfortable when you're talking about anything to do with uh, Especially masturbation. Masturbation has a lot of negative connotations yeah. with it, and um, you know, guys, if you're, especially growing up, if you're if you're even thought to masturbate, um, I mean, it's definitely not something you want coming out. No pun intended. In in, in a <laughs> high school audience, right? It's uh, to be called a jerk off is very negative. Right. So I think there's there's always been that social stigma, and women they've always have this sort of idea that oh, if they're too sexual, it could be something bad. So I think on a personal level, it really does uh, create a lot of inhibitions. But then on a professional level, we've got the educational community especially. Anytime we're, we're try, attempting to interview educators or, or professors, there's this resistance from the school system and uh, the PRs oh. in the school system. Like, oh, you're talking about sex. And, oh, okay, maybe. And you're talking about masturbation. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's, it just seems to be too touchy. Yeah, and it's funny, and it's like they don't even have to explain it. It's a knee-jerk reaction that people feel very entitled to. Like, because just masturbation, talking about it, is wrong. Right, and well, the, the other thing is, is someone made the argument that, okay, well, it's just not something we need to talk about. It's like hemorrhoids, you know? No one wants to talk about hemorrhoids, right? But I thought about that, and I'm like, hemorrhoids aren't pleasurable. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Masturbation can be. Well, it can be, <laughs> ideally. Well, that goes to another <laughs> subject. Oh, I mean, we've yeah. had some, some talk about, you know, there's auto asphyxiation we go into and, and masturbation injuries, and, and that's fascinating, too. Where, what's, what's too much, and is there too much? Well, where's, where's the overlap between pleasure and pain, and where did you learn that? But in some ways, it's some of the same nerve pattern, you know, pathways, so it kind of makes sense, but, yeah, that gets into a little sketchy area. So. Uh, yeah, sticky area. Sticky, yes. <laughs> um, and so specifically, since my show is about female sexuality, and you mentioned a little bit about women before, what any surprising findings that are talking to folks about female sexuality and masturbation? Um, as far as females, I, I'm surprised that they're as uncomfortable with it as... as it seems men are definitely uncomfortable with it, but they joke around it, and they mm -hmm. do talk about it, and it is more socially acceptable, I guess. And, but women... 
I've been surprised at how uncomfortable they've been. And then the, the, other, the other aspect of that is I've, I've talked to sex educators and some females, and we did a wonderful interview with Betty Dotson, and, <laughs> and I think she's nearing 80 now, and uh, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but, <laughs> but anyway, she's, she's getting older, well. we'll say, and, and, um, and she was very comfortable talking about sexuality, and she actually shocked me. And then there's that surprise. Every once in a while, I sit back and think, I'm making a movie about masturbation. <laughs> This is what I'm doing. This is literally my job, and uh, and I guess it's it's always filled with some surprises. Yeah, it is funny to take that moment to step back and be like, how did I get on this path, and how lucky am I? <laughs> I think it's just a blast. Awesome. All right, and our final question is our randomly generated gorilla soapbox question. Oh. <laughs> Do you have names for your genitalia, and if yes, what? <laughs> Interesting. Well, um, it depends on what country I'm in, actually. Um, if I'm in France, which I was recently, it's Pierre. Um, if I, uh, no, I, you know, I, I've never really, seriously, never named my genitalia. I found that I've had girlfriends that have. Um, like Little Nicholas or something? Actually, on the French note, Petit Nicolas was one of those <laughs> actually. Um, and, and the petit part bothered me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what about Grand Nicolas? Yeah. But no, I don't personally have any names for, for my genitalia. Okay. All right, well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about Sticky the Movie, and this fabulous documentary that's going to be coming out, check out this website here. Sexual fun fact number 600. What percentage of men and what percentage of women masturbate, at least from time to time? <laughs> the consensus of those doing a statistical analysis of this is that around 90% of the total male population and 65% of the total female population masturbate from time to time. Dr. Jen doesn't really like it when I do sections on my own, but <laughs> I really like masturbation, so I'm going to do this anyway. So, okay, sometimes people think it's wrong to masturbate if they're in a relationship, but baby, this keeps the fire stoked and your, your sex drive pumping. And have you masturbated in front of your partner before? Ugh, this is not only hot, but your partner can learn exactly how you like to be touched and you can learn the same by watching them and I know sweetie I know this can feel kind of embarrassing like it's wrong that you're touching yourself in front of someone and I mean come on as kids we all probably got our hands slapped away from our genitals so it's, no wonder it's hard to get over that and know that it's okay there's there's just a vulnerability around it. But imagine pushing yourself beyond your boundaries a bit with a partner you trust to masturbate in front of them. Trust me, they will be so aroused. And the level of intimacy you've shared is just deepened, which can only increase your trust and connection during sex. All right, I better get out of here. <laughs> And what have others had to say about masturbation? Well, Lily Tomlin said, We have reason to believe that man first walked upright to free his hands for masturbation. Betty Dodson is quoted saying, I used to think masturbation was not really sex because it only involved me. That's a very limited view of human sexuality and it isn't going to work for women. Truman Capote shared, the good thing about masturbation is that you don't have to get dressed up for it. And we can thank George Carlin for this one. If God intended us not to masturbate, he would have made our arms shorter. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I wonder why my hands are so sticky here. Hmm. Visit me at drjensden.com or email me at jennifer at drjensden.com. 
And if you want to see this show continue, then spread the word. We're looking for donations and sponsors to be able to keep doing what we're doing here at Girl of Soapbox. And the more viewers we have, the happier everyone is. So, you know, I always say be kind to yourself. But I mean, really, like, be kind to yourself. <laughs>